The minigame compilation is a genre of game associated with the lowest, most bottom-of-the-barrel stuff besides Mario Party or something. But do you know what the true key to success and quality is in this genre? Just make the minigames tiny and put like a thousand of them in. And thus, the microgame was born. With uh, that word specifically being coined by a little spin-off of Mario Artist Polygon Studio. Yes, that's a thing, look it up. WarioWare Inc. Mega Microgames. And ever since I played Gay Man Wario for the Nintendo Wii U, I've really liked the series and found it super fun. If I had to describe what makes WarioWare so interesting, I would say communication. You get one single word to tell you how to do each microgame, and the way they get you to understand that in less than a second is fascinating to me. As I think more and more about the design of this classic series, I thought it'd be fun to take a brief look at a few other series with the same basic premise as WarioWare, and to see how they approach the microgame concept, or just how they play in general, or just to see some other highlights of the genre I love. To be clear, these aren't actually ripoffs of WarioWare or anything. I'm just looking at them because they're similar gameplay-wise. Let's start with the first game to be discussed, Point Blank DS. Point Blank is a light gun series by Bandai Namco, most popular on the PS1 and arcades, with it being similar to what would later become the WarioWare series. Just little mini games based around shooty stuff. That's gonna be uh, hard to acquire, so luckily we have a game without any of that, Point Blank DS. It's an entry on the DS utilizing touch controls instead of the usual light gun affair. And it even pulls minigames from across the Point Blank trilogy. Consider it Point Blank Mania. So yes, this game controls with you tapping little targets to shoot on, and no, it doesn't feel ideal to me. There's a certain rapid fireness you need to apply, and it feels pretty awkward to have to tap the screen a lot. It doesn't really feel like the minigames were designed around it, because they weren't. They were made for a gun and arcades, and if you're going to do a, that Point Blank Mania thing, I don't think you should make it the DS game. They're definitely possible, just not the best really, and some of them don't even seem possible just because you have to be so fast with your tapping. Honestly, it might just be that I couldn't find my stylus, so I had to use it with my fat fingies obscuring more of the screen, but I don't exactly know if a stylus would have fixed that, and hey, just gonna put it out there, when I played WarioWare Touched without a stylus, it didn't feel bad at all. This definitely isn't a deal breaker, but it did make it feel just slightly off in a fundamental way to me. I have this game on DS, but I played it on an emulator for footage, and yes, that makes it worse. Look, I don't usually suck this much, okay? I do suck, just not to that degree. My footage is atrocious. I know. Minigames are a bit longer than you'll probably be expecting, and they actually require quite a lot of smart thinking from you. They're usually the expected arcade stuff. Shoot the criminals and avoid the civilians, or shoot these numbers in order. There's a lot of them, and they're pretty addicting at times. They almost lean more into chaos than the quick, don't make a mistake of WarioWare. There's something just really fun about having to have quick reaction time, while you spot targets as they come on screen and everything. The gameplay is frantic and chaotic and fun. The minigames definitely have a lot of charm to them, which a game like this needs, and the entire game is cartoonish and silly. Even the protagonists of this game, Dr. Dawn and Dr. Dan, look like Ernie and Bert if they were South Park Canadians. Also, when I look them up, the first result is from the Germa wiki, so... I bet there's some story there. The point blank, if you will, of this section is that the game is hard to hate because it's cartoony and silly, and the game has you doing stuff like shooting sheep until they're sheared. Like, that's fun. This game's pretty lacking in content, though, which is disappointing because from what I can tell, it's not a thing the point-blank games have had before. The first game had a whole RPG mode, 
but here you get an arcade mode where you play through each game in varying difficulties. There's also a versus and free play mode, but the big new gameplay mode here is called Brain Massage. It's just kind of the same thing as arcade mode. It's a collection of the already existing minigames, but put in different orders, and I don't know why this is the big new mode that's on the front of the box. They even removed the protagonists from the box for this stupid mode. It is probably the gameplay mode I spend most of the time with, but even then it's really not that different at all from arcade mode. So your two options are basically play these minigames or play these minigames. It was a little disappointing. I wish this game was more substantial. Point Blank DS is a title I'm heavily mixed on, but just from playing the thing I can tell the series it comes from is at least great. That's like kinda all I can really say on this game to be honest. It's pretty short and it ends up lacking after a while. Next up is probably the more famous game with a similar format to WarioWare, Rhythm Heaven. From one insubstantial game to another that has more content than WarioWare, Rhythm Heaven is another Nintendo series, and it is often compared to WarioWare. It even got some of its characters put into WarioWare at some point. It's a big cult classic too, even if, again, talking about WarioWare, it hasn't received as many titles as it. Of course, the biggest change is the fact that it's all controlled by rhythm, and the flow of each game, which makes it a very different experience. The specific entry I'm playing here is the first game on Game Boy Advance. It's Japan exclusive, but I played an English patch, so it won't affect me too much. Although, there was one game where you had to look in either direction, depending on what directive you receive, spoken in Japanese, but you know, I've seen Parasite the Maxim, so I know what the word left is in Japanese. Most people refer to this game as Rhythm Tengoku to differentiate it from Rhythm Heaven on DS, but just know I'm talking about the GBA version. I am still calling it Rhythm Heaven though. I don't have a good sense of rhythm. I just don't. This game was brutal to me. Blame my elementary school's cut music program. There are eight sets to play through where you beat that set's games which are themed about rhythm. Stuff like being a karate master and hitting objects in time, or clapping in time to rhythm, as a monkey. Technically, you could boil down most of the gameplay to press a button in time, but the music is so different, and rhythm is timed so different as well, so they all drastically feel different. The visuals are super iconic as well, and there are tons of these games. This contributes to a sense that you really need to master these stages, and they can be pretty unforgiving if you're like me, I mean if you have trouble getting the hang of their rhythm. And the way this game offers criticism on how to be better at them, or encourages you to go forward is a little... I don't know. To prevent someone from brute forcing everything, this game attempts to give you constructive criticism on how you can improve but it only says what you did wrong. It's great that they have that, and it's great that they can recognize this, but it just feels frustrating after a while. I'll be stuck at a level because I struggle to time button presses when the screen gets dark, so the game will tell me, you need to see in the dark. I can fucking see that. It leaves you to find strategies completely on your own when it wouldn't be that hard to just give advice. It does at least tell you if you got one part well, but failed overall, which is also super fantastic. And it definitely f helps keep you more motivated. You might think this seems like an odd point to talk about so much, but remember this is Nintendo, and being accessible to plenty of people is a goal for this game. The fact that those critiques even exist is evidence of this. There's also a cute little coffee shop which you're intending to go to if you struggle at a level. So I thought they would be able to give you more advice, but all it really does is give you the option to skip a level. It's a coffee shop, why couldn't they make this thing cozier? I do hope Nintendo makes this aspect a bit better in the future, since the Rhythm Heaven sequels are much more casual oriented since it was on the DS and Wii, and I mean, Beyonce advertised it. 
I haven't talked about the best part of Rhythm Heaven yet though, and that is the remixes. There's eight, one at the end of each stage, and I think these are why Rhythm Heaven is such a cult classic, and it's sort of had a resurgence as of late. They put together all the stages in one song, and it's beautiful, as you switch between every stage you spent so long mastering. WarioWare technically has remix stages, and yes, I like them, but they do kind of feel like filler compared to these. Here, they're most of what you play for. It's really cool how if you see perfect footage of someone playing, you can't really tell what you control. It just looks like a video. It makes it look really impressive, and videos of these remixes have become pretty popular. I've even, I've even had friends who aren't really into money games or Nintendo games who have mentioned Rhythm Heaven just because they find videos of it cool, even though it's somewhat obscure as far as Nintendo stuff goes. And that is great. It's great. I definitely recommend Rhythm Heaven if you like music at all, and I'm glad it's such a cult classic. I don't know if it's entirely my thing though, but I'll have to play more of the series to know for sure. Next up is the game Super Bishy Boshy Champ. The Bishy Boshy series is a series of games on arcade by Konami, which alongside Point Blank set the scene for WarioWare. The particular entry I played was Super Bishy Boshy Champ on the PS1 through the game Bishy Boshy Special. It's really meant to be played with multiple players, but what is possible? So this game is basically a full game version of those challenges from WarioWare, while multiple people play through a series of mini games. For the most part, they're pretty fun. You get a good variety of different types of games. And I also noticed how there are a lot of games where you press a certain button according to what color an object is on screen. So pray you're not colorblind. Or playing on emulator with something other than a PlayStation controller. It's pretty unique though, and you do get some pretty cool sorts of mini games. Mostly though, if you know WarioWare, these things won't be too out of the ordinary. But the mini games are less micro, as they have a brief blurb to explain how to play them. So there's not necessarily as much of a flow with these games. Just a series of games. I would say the biggest issue in this game is how stupidly long the arcade mode there's like 40 stages, because the game just has to show off all of its mi mi no, micro or mini mini games in one take. And it takes so long, you, it would basically be unbeatable on an actual arcade machine. If you play like 20 mini games, that should really be enough. I know I'm kind of struggling to say too much original on this game, but I can assure you it's not because it's bad. The game's just a lot of what we've already been seeing in a more simplistic fashion, since it did establish a lot of those tropes. Still, I'm sure with multiple people it could be a blast. I do really hope this series comes back, so we could see how it would continue... Insert Konami Pachinko joke here. It's best suited to Arcade Chaos, which unfortunately means it has a harder time to keep going on in the modern day if it can't adapt to hardware like those series I mentioned, WarioWare, Point Blank, and Rhythm Heaven. Although, its name is the most fun to say out of all of these. Bishibashi. 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 Uh, coincidentally, I have no idea how to say the name of this following game. I think Nitor Inc. Sure, here's Nitor Inc. Toho Micro Games. Our last game is a parody of the WarioWare series, that's also a parody of Toho Project. Meaning this is technically the first Toho game I ever played, even if it's a fan game. It pr fits pretty well considering Ashley's basically already a Toho character. It's a free demo available on Steam, so do note it is not a full release. Even still, I think it might be my favorite of these games. Right off the bat, this is the one that's the most similar to WarioWare sharing a lot of the aesthetic similarities, and a microgame flow. Even having the same type of boss minigame, but hold off on those accusations of plagiarizing a billion dollar corporation, cause this game is 
absolutely constructive. It's played on mouse and keyboard, which allows you to swap between playing them between micro games. So each game is built around either a keypad or a mouse. It reminds me of the way games like WarioWare Smooth Moves make you swap form baton positions between games in a quick and snappy way. And it's really how all WarioWare sequels differentiate them. By having a gimmick like a new control scheme or something. So this absolutely feels fresh and new. It's something Nintendo could never do. Beyond PC. Because of the fact that it's a free fan game demo, and that it initially looked very flash gamey, I expected Nitor Inc. to be lacking in content, but that's not necessarily true. Of course there's only one stage with an arcade mode unlock after beating it once, but there's still a lot of micro games, and they're animated in a very high quality way, and are very responsive and play well. They were actually designed and animated by a collection of different people, who individually created their own micro games, which is a genius approach when the series it's based on is already knowing, known for having a lot of different art styles in its micro games. A lot of them were very obviously made and paint, but there's still a variety of art styles, and even some sprite art in there for good measure. It's infinitely charming, and I'm sure it would be even more so for a Toho fan. That may be a series I'm not familiar with, but I do admire its fandom's whole sense of creativity and collaborative spirit, and it shows here. This game is great, and it absolutely represents the future of microgame collection gameplay. It almost makes me wonder about a universe where a company like Capcom or Konami made WarioWare, and we could have get their universes get a whole silly spin-off like this. Maybe we could see Evil Ryuware or fake Trevor Belmont wear. Since Wario Land has been getting a resurgence through fan games like Pizza Tower and the upcoming Anton Blast, I think it would be very fun if such a luxury could be afforded to WarioWare too, even if it's not quite as dead as Wario Land. This game earned my respect, and I think I'm gonna finally learn how to pronounce its name. Kawashiro Nitori. I basically got it right. Fantastic. The minigame collection genre has had a pretty simple start. The idea of it first being formed through a fun arcade style game about playing a bunch of little hectic micro games. But overall, it's been refined ever since with a real design philosophy being applied to the flow and feeling of each game. It's a genre that stands out to me as being super fun, and way deeper than I initially expected. I hope this genre gets expanded upon further, with either big releases or indie games, or both, and I really hope we get to see more creative thinking and design philosophies about it. I also hope Nitor Inc. can be multiplayer. I'll just say this. I started this project because I was interested in games that feel like WarioWare. I ended it wanting more games that feel like WarioWare. I guess you could say I wanted fun, and Wario showed me fun. Yeah, like Wario was showing me all those games. Thank you so much for watching, and I'll see you later. Wah! 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 Oh my god! I I'm sorry! Wario, I'm sorry I said point blank and Nito Inc. were good games! Wah! Look, I'm sorry! Wah! Wah!